Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Tuesday, May 14th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk heavyweights. Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, you know you're in a barber shop or a bar, right? Barber shops for me, unfortunately, are a distant memory. But let's say you're in a bar or you're at a Starbucks, some coffee house place. And there are a bunch of people around and you're talking boxing. And the conversation shifts to, oh, that guy hits hard. You're talking about punching power, gifted punchers. Right, folks? I believe there are levels there. Right? You know you're talking about a gifted puncher when people are naming the guy without naming the punch. So, let's say you're sitting around and people are talking about guys with heavy hands. And someone says, Julio Cesar Chavez. Somebody else says Nigel Benn. Somebody else says George Foreman. Somebody else might say Julian Jackson. And you understand, these are guys who hit hard with both hands. You understand, these are guys who can hit you with straight punches and can hit you with hooks. Right? The guy's punch has a thud. You don't have to say, wow, he was a great hooker. Or wow, that guy throws a great overhand right. Right? You just know. You know, George Foreman, this guy hit hard. Period. So, people here online have heard me say, that I consider Deontay Wilder's straight right hand to be an A-plus punch. It is, right? Guys can be dominating Wilder. Tyson Fury, I thought, was dominating Wilder. Gets hit with that punch, he's on the canvas. Right? I thought Luis Ortiz looked great. Got hit with a few straight right hands on the canvas multiple times. But the fact that I have to name the type of punch that Deontay Wilder throws tells me he's not in this class of puncher. Right? With George Foreman, when we said he hits hard, folks, you understood. That's both hands, not straight right hand. Not even straight. You understood. George Foreman, when he hits you, you're in trouble. I would say Foreman, even his jab, thudding jab, Carlos Monzon belongs on this list, right? Even the jab hits hard, right? I would encourage people to go back and look at the Chavez-Roger Mayweather fight. Understand, Mayweather himself had a big punch, right? Those two guys decide to trade. You'll notice Chavez, power in both hands. You couldn't say, oh, Chavez, great left hand. No, Chavez, power in both hands. That's the kind of puncher that Anthony Joshua is. Right? It's possible the best single punch in the division might be Wilder's straight right hand. But understand with Joshua you can't avoid his power. Right? You notice the guys he knocks out, many of them look like they've been in car crashes. Right? Could Dylan White have gotten up and crossed the street after he hit the canvas against Anthony Joshua? Alexander Povetkin had been in some shootouts, folks. That Carlos Tackham-Povetkin fight, go back and look at that. 
Understand, too, Povetkin had been knocked down in some fights. He got knocked down by Vladimir Klitschko. Got up, finished the fight. Right? This is a former Olympic gold medalist. This is a former heavyweight champion. This is a guy who had been around. This is a guy who was trading big shots with David Price. Right? Povetkin's a guy who had traveled to other countries and had brought his game with him. Right? Not a bashful person. Could Alexander Povetkin have gotten up after Joshua knocked him down? Could he have gotten up and crossed the street? No. Not without help. Understand with Joshua, you don't know if it's going to be a shot up top or a shot down low. You don't know if it's going to be a straight right hand, a right uppercut, a left uppercut, a hook to the body, right or left. But the one thing you know with certainty, just like you knew with Chavez, Nigel Band, George Foreman, the Hawk, Julian Jackson, you knew that this guy hits harder than most. The Dominique Brazil fight. I thought the over-under was ridiculous here online. I said take the over. I believe it was three and a half rounds. Think about that. The over delivered. But let's just say as you're watching that fight, Brazil, who himself is an Olympian, gets hit with some shots and you just got the feeling that the guy was surprised by the punching power of Anthony Joshua. Right? Brazil knew Joshua. I just think Joshua hits harder than expected. Let me just say this too. And I, I believe it's a tribute to Joshua. I've seen guys with big punching power. And they say, okay, this is my ticket to fame. Right? So they become what I call fastball pitchers. They're in there. They're just trying to knock you out. Right, Joshua, who's blessed with very heavy hands, is trying to learn the sport of boxing. I know it sounds crazy. A heavyweight champ who's trying to improve on his jab. Right, Joshua, in many ways, is like Saul Alvarez. Right, these are guys who have the fame. They've received the money. I don't think either guy needs another dollar or another pound. Right? Or another peso. But Canelo and Joshua are guys who want to be great. In other words, Joshua's unbeaten record, Canelo's one loss to Floyd Mayweather, all the money these guys have gotten, the fact that people know them. In other words, if I go to the mall and I see a crowd, and someone says, Canelo's here. I'm not going to be surprised by the crowd. Same thing for Joshua. I think Joshua, commercially, already, he's a powerhouse in Europe. I believe he's going to be a powerhouse here in the United States. Let's face it. He wants to fight Deontay Wilder because he really wants to conquer the American market. I think hardcore boxing fans know that the person who deserves the shot against Anthony Joshua is really Tyson Fury. Right? As I sit here, I consider Tyson Fury to be the world's best heavyweight. I would just ask you to compare Fury's fight with a younger Vladimir Klitschko to Joshua's fight with an older Vladimir Klitschko. Understand, too, when Fury fights Klitschko, Klitschko's the hometown fighter. Right, Klitschko's fighting in his home country, I should say. I believe that fight was in Germany, which Klitschko, a Ukrainian, adopted. Understand, Klitschko had to go fight Joshua in the United Kingdom. Let me also say, too, the Tyson Fury you saw last year was rusty. Just look at the timeline. He'd been out of boxing. 
had some serious demons he was dealing with. When he fights Deontay Wilder, he had just come off fighting two guys who looked like they were straight out of witness protection. In other words, he was just getting his sharpness back. I'm just telling you. When you see a guy like Fury who's been out of the ring, and he's just getting back in the ring, and he's able to go the distance with Deontay Wilder, outbox him thoroughly in my opinion and now he's having more fights the boxing world should be afraid it should be very afraid let me also say this too this is a golden age of heavyweights I'm tired of people coming up to me saying boxing's dying right there's always boxing's dying guy there was back when Foreman, Ali, Joe Fraser, Ron Lyle, Jerry Quarry, Ernie Shavers rule the roost. Right? There is now somehow. People say, oh, boxing's dying, right? HBO says, oh, we can't afford to have boxing. Okay, fine, whatever. Just understand, you're in a golden era of heavyweights right now. The fact that the fans are balkanized. The fact that many of you hear me say, that Josh was a gifted puncher who's, in my opinion, ahead of Deontay Wilder, who might have the best punch in the division. The fact that many of you are probably disagreeing with me right now shows you the high quality of the debate. You have more than one unbeaten heavyweight champion with a great punch. And they're contemporaneous. Right Then you have another guy, and I know many of you disagree with me when I say Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight. You have another guy who's the lineal, who I think is more skilled than the other two. Did I forget to mention that you also have an invasion right now with a heavyweight division by arguably the most gifted cruiserweight division in recent memory? Just understand, Alexander Usyk, and I agree, he's coming off a bad injury. If you're a boxer, a bicep injury is a very dicey injury. Right? Biceps can act up in any round. Right? It could literally take away one of your arms. But Alexander Usyk belongs on the very short list of the best in the sport, pound for pound. Right? undisputed forget this unified right you know you pick up a couple of belts they say he's a unified champion Usyk was the undisputed cruiserweight champion he's the Olympic gold medalist he's unbeaten right now he travels the world fighting great fighters now he's in the heavyweight division are you sure in this flat-footed era where you could look at an entire three-minute round and see Deontay Wilder throw next to nothing. In this flat-footed era where I could look at an entire 12-round fight involving Anthony Joshua, his fight against Joseph Parker, and not see Joshua throw and land a meaningful right hand, are you sure that a guy with movement who can switch righty lefty who can fight high or low who has a punch are you sure that he might not be too fluid for these guys right let's talk about another guy who I'm excited about going to the heavyweight division Murat Gassiev folks he's lost once that was to Alexander Usyk Right, just like with Canelo, an awfully talented fighter can just face a grandmaster one night, can lose, and then can come back and just knock down the dominoes, beat several world-class fighters, pick up titles. Are you sure that Gassiev 
doesn't have the kind of energy and volume to give this group of heavyweights problems. Now, I believe in Tyson Fury, but are you certain that if Tyson Fury gets on his back foot and moves away, that Gassiev, who has foot speed, won't be able to follow him? Right? Understand too, Maris Breedis, if you want to see a great knockout, look at his knockout of Manuel Char, who has a share of a heavyweight title. In other words, the lighter guys are invading the heavyweight division at a time where the heavyweights are big and clunky. So now we get this fight. Andy Ruiz challenging for the heavyweight title on relatively short notice. Right now, let me just say this, and I know it's not the public narrative. I know many people are looking at Andy Ruiz as a guy handpicked to make Joshua look good. Right? But just understand, Ruiz like Dominique Brazil, who's fighting Wilder this weekend. Ruiz has already fought for the heavyweight title. Think about that. Worse yet, that fight against Joseph Parker was in Parker's backyard, New Zealand. I want people to revisit that fight. It goes 12 rounds. Folks, I personally consider that fight to be what I call a location fight. Right? If that fight were in Ruiz's backyard, I think Ruiz would be heavyweight champion. Right? Just like, and I know people disagree with me, and that's fine. I'm not here to be agreed with. We're just here discussing the sport and trading thoughts, deepening understandings. I thought the Joseph Parker, Anthony Joshua fight was a location fight. If that fight was in New Zealand, I think Parker gets the decision. Right? Landed more body shots. People would understand that the referee was one of Parker's opponents that night. Well, let me say this about Andy Ruiz, who I followed for years. Ruiz happens to be one of my favorite fighters because Andy, who doesn't look like a weightlifter, right? Andy has a certain, we'll call it Jackie Gleason, Heavy D, if you remember that rapper right vibe to him right Andy in my opinion has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division now this fight to me is one of the best heavyweight fights that could be made because understand Andy is rare in that normally when I see a guy with quick hands that guy doesn't want to get hit. The guy has quick feet. The guy has a back foot game. Right? The guy is trying to hit you and leave the pocket. Right? Force you to come find him and then bust off flurries. Frame the hand speed for the judges. Now occasionally you run into <laughs> you run into a fast hands combination puncher who's actually a knockout puncher right Ray Leonard now Ray had feet that Andy doesn't have Ray had an upper body that was hard to find Andy can't hide his upper body but understand Andy is firmly convinced that if he gets inside on you with his hand speed and his combination punching Andy is convinced that he can take you out. 
because that's what he's done to many fighters, most recently Alexander Demetrenko, just a few weeks ago. Right? And he comes in, starts flashing hand speed. It's almost a Vasyl Lomachenko type thing. And he comes in, starts, va- starts flashing hand speed. Many opponents can't cope and they give up. Right? They just can't take it. They say, okay, enough. I've had enough. Now, I believe Joshua wins this fight because I view Joshua like I view a George Foreman type guy. Right? I just don't know how a guy could want to be in the pocket with a gifted puncher like Joshua. Right? I watched George Foreman in his career and the guys who gave George Foreman problems were guys who either you know had some cat and mouse rope-a-dope game going on or guys who moved a little bit right uh, Tommy Morrison if you remember that fight right Axel Schultz didn't want to you know collapse the pocket on George Foreman in this fight I'm convinced Andy Ruiz who doesn't have much of a back foot game who doesn't hide his upper body in other words you won't see him bending at the waist like you saw Canelo doing in his last fight against Danny Jacobs right that Andy's alpha Andy's gonna try to collapse the pocket just like he did against Joseph Parker in New Zealand now in that fight Joseph Parker who has a back foot concedes the pocket to Andy gets on his back foot and is operating behind a jab lives off a jab against Andy Ruiz But understand in this fight, while Joshua hits harder than Parker, let's say, Joshua doesn't move as well as Parker. And in this fight, Joshua is invading the United States. Right? He wants to put on a show in New York City. He didn't need to fight in New York City. He's drawing tens of thousands of people in the UK. So Joshua wants this to be a statement fight. And a heavy-handed guy like this won't want to make a statement on his back foot behind a jab conceding the pocket to heavy underdog Andy Ruiz. So what I believe you're going to get is combustion. Ruiz firmly believes firmly believes that he beat Joseph Parker. He believes the judges ripped him off. You know the mindset. He's not going to get ripped off again. So he's going to be there. He's that rear fighter. And I know it's going to sound ridiculous. It might even be a crazier you know, visual. But he's going to be there trying to hunt down Anthony Joshua. He'll be looking for Joshua in the ring, in my opinion. And Joshua is going to see a guy in front of him who isn't episodic. He's not Alexander Povetkin. He's not outside, way outside, then leaping inside with shots. No, Joshua is going to see a guy who looks like he's staying in the pocket. And Joshua's going to think, you got to be kidding me. And Joshua won't have to deal with the Dylan White level jab. Right? That stick where the guy's in the pocket. You say, okay, let's set up shop in the pocket with him. But then you're getting hit on the side of the head and you say, oh man, enough of this. Right? You start to feel like Mikey Garcia did against Errol Spence. So I'm expecting Joshua to go for the KO. The secret to this fight is that he won't be the only one. This is a great fight. This is hand speed against power. Right? The secret to this fight is that Andy 
not only throws fast punches, Andy thinks fast. He's what I call adaptive reactive. This fighter is much better than advertised. So if I had to put odds on this fight, I'd make it 66-33, right? I'd say that the champ, Anthony Joshua, likely wins this fight by KO. That's my lead bet for the fight, Joshua by KO. But I'm going to hedge the play simply because the odds allow, because I don't understand how any casino can have a guy who went 12 rounds against Joseph Parker in New Zealand and that's his only loss. That's his only loss. I don't understand how they can have that guy, guy who's already fought for the heavyweight title as a 9 to 1 underdog. And folks, you know, my belief is that when a champion hops in the ring with a legitimate world-class contender, right? That contender, if he truly is world-class, will have at least a 20% chance of winning. Right? If you're going to break through the 5 to 1 barrier, right? Actually, it's 4 to 1, right? Out of 5, the champ would win 4 times. If you're going to break through the 4 to 1 barrier, something crazy has to be going on. Now here, I just want to remind people, right? Anthony Joshua isn't a guy who clinches a lot. You saw him badly hurt against Vladimir Klitschko, who can be a murderous puncher himself. You saw the survival skills in that fight. Was he able to step forward and clinch Klitschko? Let me also say this too. You heard stories about David Price knocking him down. You have a film on YouTube here. Amateur fight. Dylan White knocking him down. You saw as a pro. Vladimir Klitschko knock him down. Right, folks, I'm just telling you. It's still early in the careers of fighters like Anthony Joshua. Right? It's still early. He still hasn't fought Tyson Fury, folks. He still hasn't fought Deontay Wilder. Right? You've heard me mention other names. Alexander Usyk, he hasn't fought him yet. Right? I think that you need to question everything. You've already seen him down in a pro fight. Now, if a guy collapses the pocket because that's Andy Ruiz's game, and if he does it with hand speed, I'll concede, Joshua makes adjustments. He's adaptive reactive. He can shorten punches. He shortens a right hand against Alexander Povetkin. But you know the way speed operates, right? A guy comes in, he collapses the pocket, he's unloading the draw, right? The kitchen cabinet, everything's coming out. How is Joshua going to defend himself? Right? Is he the kind of heavyweight who you feel at this stage of his career has the defensive skills to deal with superior hand speed if he's unable to catch the guy? Let me just say this. Let's get back to Vladimir Klitschko. Understand, Vladimir Klitschko had some rough fights earlier in his career. 
Boxing's a craft. It takes years to learn even when you're talented. I mentioned Klitschko because to me, Joshua is trying to be Klitschko. Right? Jab, left hook, straight right hand, maintain distance, right? Joshua's not a guy who wants to, you know, push you away. Like Foreman did Fraser or Lennox Lewis did Mike Tyson. Right? He doesn't want to get physical with you. He wants to throw big punches. He wants a well-behaved fight. He has outsized punching power. He wants to knock you out in a structured environment. Think about how many years it took Klitschko to get that structure. Didn't he lose to Ross Purity? Didn't he lose to Corey Sanders? Didn't he lose to Lehman Brewster? We're on Vladimir Klitschko's career arc right now is Anthony Joshua. So let me close, since I'm over 30 minutes here, let me close by saying I do expect Joshua to win this fight. Right? I think he wins two out of three matches. But Andy Ruiz is a very tough opponent because Andy has never been knocked down. He has a chin on him because Andy has fought tough fights. He fights Joe Hanks when Joe Hanks was unbeaten and people thought Hanks was the future. Right? Don't fall for the persona. Andy Ruiz is a poker player. Right? He looks happy-go-lucky. People come over to him. He talks about how he can't wait for his next Snickers bar. Right? He's here, you know, looking uh, happy to be here and stuff like that. Right? The real Andy Ruiz is a technician who's a combination puncher. Folks, I'll be surprised if Joshua throws more punches than Andy Ruiz. Right? Andy's really a combination puncher. And understand, Andy's the kind of guy who wants an opponent to throw his hands. Because Andy believes when he opens up, the opponent won't be able to hang with him. Understand, too, and this will sound ridiculous, but if you ever saw Jackie Gleason dance, if you ever saw Heavy D dance, you understood that these men were actually above average athletes, right? Once you see Andy throw his hands, you realize he's an above average athlete, right? His hand speed, how he puts punches together, his ability to throw combinations from in the pocket and stay in the pocket, right? The fact that when he drops Joe Hanks, you don't even know the punch that drops Hanks until you look at the replay. His hands are that fast. Right? All I'm saying is don't let Andy's look and easygoing demeanor fool you. Right? The guy is aggressive. He believes he has a share of the heavyweight title. Read his interviews where he talks about the Joseph Parker fight. Right? He believes he got robbed. This is his shot. Let me also close by saying Luis Ortiz blew it big time. You mean to tell me that Anthony Joshua was preparing to fight a righty? Right? And people here online know I didn't give Gerald Miller a shot at winning that fight. You mean to tell me Anthony Josh was about to fight a righty? That situation falls apart over a failed drug test by Miller, right? So then he approaches Luis Ortiz's group and says, hey, I'd like to fight you. You're a southpaw for crying out loud. The guy's not even prepared to fight you. If I were Ruiz's crew, right? Now, while I firmly believe it, people have a right to negotiate, but if I'm Ruiz's group, um, excuse me, if I'm Ortiz's crew, 
how do I let this fight right now slip past me? It's possible because boxers often have injuries. It's possible he had an injury. He's in his late 30s. He might have thought to himself, gee, I'm just not ready right now on short notice for the fight. That's a distinct possibility. Right? But if he negotiated himself out of this fight, I want people to understand that Andy Ruiz is the kind of guy who's itching for a fight like this. The moment <coughs> is not going to be too big for him. He's already gone 12 rounds in a heavyweight championship match on the other side of the globe. To sum up, I expect Joshua to win the fight. The odds are terrible. They're not worthwhile to take Joshua simply to win. They're just not. So I'm going to take risks here. Might blow up in my face. As subscribers know, it wouldn't be the first time. But I like Joshua by KO because Andy Ruiz is going to force him to fight. I like Joshua by KO, hedged with Andy Ruiz at 9-1, to one, simply to win. Ruiz, in my opinion, has a 33% shot of winning this fight, not a 10% shot. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.